What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hit or Die podcast. Jake Seldotti here. Um, lots of stuff happened around the baseball world in the last week, uh, weekend, and even some stuff this week. Uh, some good and some bad. Uh, before we get into it, though, for those watching uh, on YouTube, you can listen to the podcast on all the podcast platforms, Spotify, iTunes, etc etc and for those that listen please go over to to youtube maybe watch uh, an episode or two uh, and hit the subscribe button Uh, again if you are listening uh, on itunes go give us a rating go give us five stars how about that Uh, maybe leave a comment or something but uh, again a lot of stuff happened over the weekend around major league baseball and again like i said some good stuff and some bad stuff more more bad, I would say, than good. Starting with the good. We'll, we'll start with the good stuff. Uh, Miguel Cabrera. Miggy reached 3,000 hits. Uh, joined the, the 3,000 hit club. And, uh, I mean, that's just insane. Like, you, I was thinking about how lucky we are as fans, and we don't talk about it enough or maybe appreciate it enough of being able to see guys' careers, right? You We grew up in got to see Derek Jeters and Barry Bonds and Ken Griffey Juniors and Frank Thomas and, you know, Chipper Jones, Maddox, all these guys, you get to see them uh, to the end of their careers and uh, appreciate, you know, what they did for the game and, uh, you know, just the the level of play that they they were capable. I mean, like just watching certain guys hit or pitch and to see Miggy accomplish what he accomplished in the years he's been able to play, you know, professional baseball. Uh, it's a big deal, you know, we, we, I think we, as fans tend to sometimes take it for granted, uh, that we're watching guys do just spectacular things and just God gifted players, um, compete at the highest level. I know the day before he got 3000, so that was uh Saturday, Saturday, uh, they were playing the Yankees and Boone, Aaron Boone intentionally walked him in the ninth. Uh, but in a, in a, I mean, a, a baseball situation, uh, I know Miggy was chirping at him a little bit, but after kind of, you know, it's a baseball move. And I think uh, the the Tigers ended up scoring a run because of that intentional walk. So, you know, I'm sure Miggy would take the win. Um, but also having said, uh, you know, about Miguel Cabrera and getting the 3,000 hits, I, I, is, is he a no doubt? Like To me, he's no doubt first ballot, unanimous Hall of Fame. Unanimous, and I know Griffey barely missed it. Uh, I, M- Rivera, I believe, is the only one to do so, um, and he probably won't be. But to me, like, there's no reason not to. There's no reason for one writer to not vote him in. None. No reason for one writer to not vote first ballot unanimous. And I know we'll have some time. We st- I think he said last year he's playing through the end of his contract, which is going to be 2023. 20, um, I mean, so, and let me get it. We're, just so we're clear with Miggy, you're talking about 20 year career, uh, five years in Florida, in the last 15 with Detroit. Uh, just some of his stat line, just so we can, we don't have to debate this. Although I'm sure we will in, whenever his time comes up. Two-time MVP. He was top five outside of winning. Top five in MP, M, uh, MVP voting five times. 11-time All-Star, seven Silver Sluggers, four batting titles. Uh, was the World Series champ in 03. Two-time MLB Player of the Year. Uh, a Triple Crown in 2012. Uh, 3,000 hits, 500-plus homers. Uh, currently, a uh, career batting average of 310. Uh, and he's a double shy of 600, which he may have got in over the, the last week. I, I didn't even check. Uh, but it doesn't happen often enough where we say thank you. You know, the next in line for 3,000 hits? I don't know. I, I was looking at numbers, and you've seen them. You know, if you watch MLB Tonight, they post some stuff like Altuve's close. Uh, Freddie Freeman, not close, but guys that could reach it. Uh, Freddie Freeman was a guy. You know, it's questionable. Could Bryce Harper, could Mike Trout, you know, barring injury, 
are we going to see 3,000 hits again? You know, it, it, it's, uh, and it's an impressive stat. His stat line is impressive, period. Um, you know, and I love all the tributes that, that they gave Miggy. And, and, I mean, I've seen it all week. I mean, last night, it's Thursday today, Wednesday, I was watching uh, MLB tonight, and they were still showing, you know, more tributes of uh, his, his 3,000th hit and some of the stuff he's done and achieved throughout his career. It's awesome, man. And, and again, we don't say thank you enough to these guys uh, for the longevity. I was looking at, you know, some pitchers and just some some stuff for, you know, talking about changing the game from, you know, not changing the game, but uh, later on we're going to talk. I want to talk about, uh, you know, how people think pitching is or use pitching is better is a simple answer to why offense is down. And you go look at Nolan Ryan's career. And it spanned 27 seasons. I mean, it's insane. You know, you're just, you won't see that stuff. What Cal Ripken did in his playing streak is, you know, when game started, it, it, you're not going to see any of that stuff. You're not going to, I don't know when we're going to, if we'll ever see 300 game winners again. So, you know, to appreciate what guys like Miguel Cabrera have done throughout their career, you know, we just got to take a step back and say thank you. It's It's a big deal, you know. And again, you see some younger guys that could get to 3,000 hits. Well, these are long ways to go. Hopefully, you know, could Vladdy get there, Vlad Jr. Or, or Acuna? Or, you know, there's some younger players that potentially could get there. Well, you know, obviously we get to watch them go throughout their career and, and again, appreciate what you're seeing because you never know who the next, you know, great guys, you know, going to be out there. You know, and, and so, like, that's when, I, you know, we talk about Griffey. It's like, man, if he had not gotten hurt, holy cow, what what would he have done? What didn't we get to see? You know, and so with Miggy, we know what we've seen throughout the last 20 years. And, uh, you know, it looks like 2023, as far as what he said, I believe a summer ago, is, is where he's going to hang it up. So, yeah, just congrats to Miguel Cabrera. And, uh, and thank you, you know, as a fan, truly, like, you know, tip your cap. You know, and if you can get to a game where Detroit hits to the West Coast, you know, try to get out there and see him play. You know, get try to go take in a game and enjoy, you know, I no doubt he will be a Hall of Famer. And uh, it's pretty special, man. Pretty special. Now I'm here. And so- Drillville, One Oak Field. Drillville. That's what we call it, Drillville. Our head coach. Uh, Hennessy? Hennessy. Yeah, he's the mayor of Drillville. <laughs> We call him. Hey, you know, if you recognize the voice on the other end of the phone, that's a local product, Fresno City, Madera High School, now with the uh, the Dodgers organization. In Double A, in Tulsa with the Drillers, Alec Gamboa. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, so I, you were talking about your coach being what now? <laughs> what do you guys call hey. him? We call him the mayor of Drillville. Everybody loves him here in Tulsa. Coach Hennessy, how are you liking Tulsa? Tulsa's amazing. I mean, it's. I didn't really know what to get into, you know, coming to Oklahoma. I've never been here. But uh, Tulsa, it, it, it's a nice little vibe downtown. Um, kind of, it's a little bigger. I, I, it seems like downtown here is kind of about the same, like back home, Fresno. Yeah. Um it's nice, so I love it here. Man, Everybody you, loves Driller Baseball. Have you played there during the summer? Uh, have you been there? Here in Tulsa? Yeah. Like no, I've never, were, so you've never I, been in that. Well, but you were in the Midwest for a little while, right? Yeah, Central, we played. Not so I, I much was Midwest, in like, but, you know, Central Illinois. America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but never been to Oklahoma. Dude, That's my yeah, first no. time. All right, well, wait till the, <laughs> wait till the summer comes. Yeah, I bet some of the guys who've been here, they've been telling me, like, just yeah. wait until this heat comes. It's going to be horrible. Yeah, it's – uh, I would think I was there in the July or something. It was it was bad. I mean, off the plane, my arms were already, like, sweating, and it was – yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it was different. But, uh, hey, also on your staff, too, your hitting coach, Brett Pill. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I was looking at your guys' roster, and uh, man, that, that guy, he had a couple years in the big leagues, but was a yeah. Ca- Cal State Fullerton – Alumni, uh-huh. and I'm pretty sure 04 was on the national championship team. You have to ask him about that. 
Oh, I will. I, I, I definitely remember his name. Um, he was with the Giants, wasn't he? Yeah, that's where I believe he debuted with the Giants. Yeah, he might have been yeah. with them the whole time. I forget. His brother, um, younger brother, was in the big leagues, too, for for a minute. Also played at Fullerton, uh, Tyler Pill. It's, it's, it's funny because, you know, when you're in spring training, you don't really – I mean, especially since he's a hitting coach, you know, it's kind of like a foreign language when we talk. Um, I don't see him often. And so when I got here – and, you know, he, I introduced myself to him. He's like, yeah, I'm Brett. Brett. Brett Pill. And I'm like, oh, wow. I definitely remember that guy when he played with the Giants. Um, it's just crazy, you know. You kind of run into people like that here. Yeah, tell him we, uh, we need to get him on the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he'd love it. I would love, love to get it. some of those stories just back from the college days. Uh, and then I mean, uh-huh. the other thing, again, before we jump right in with you, you your pitching coach this year was that, the same guy you had last year, right? Yeah. Followed uh, you from, Denick. from yeah, Denick from single A up to double. Yeah. That's that's how's uh-huh. that? How like how's that been for you? It's it's been perfect, you know, because the same philosophy he was teaching in high A is the same thing he's teaching here now, and I don't really have to do much, you know. I'm it's kind of the same approach I had last year. I don't, you know, he he's kind of preaching the same thing. He he taught all of us last year, so it's you know that transition was perfect. Yeah, don't I don't got to switch too many things up. Really, no, and it, it sounds like uh, just a good situation to be in with the guy that oh, knows yeah. what you're capable of, and and you know uh-huh. can can speak for your value or you bring it to the team and all that. So uh, yeah, no, awesome, man. And so just from the get go, how are you feeling? Like, how are you feeling? How has the first few weeks been? You know, uh, just uh-huh. again a new new arena, new area, double A, which is awesome. Uh, so just mm-hmm. h- how are you feeling, man? Uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't, I don't think I'm feeling my best right now but I, I i feel you know happy with where i'm at you know especially coming out of the spring training i felt like i was in arizona for a long time i was playing ball for a while i was out there i think starting early december um I was, so i was, I was say it was before the end of the year yeah it was before even spring training started so i've kind of been uh you know out there playing baseball maybe a little too much um my body's feeling it right now but it's going to kick into second gear here soon and uh but the body, I mean, overall, it, it's good. I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, we've had a couple series here. Um, and, and the team's looking good. I think um, we're finally starting to catch. We, we were high a little bit. Kind of caught a little, uh, I think it was Springfield last week. They um, Good ball club over there. Um, but, no, we're, uh, we're finally uh, kind of picking up here when we came back home. So everything's looking good. And how's the feel? How's the stuff feeling? Good. Kind of uh, the, the sliders, kind of. Uh, I think I would say day and night better than last year. Um, the changeup was the out pitch last year. I think it's kind of the slider has taken over. Um, have you so noticed? That's, that's a good thing. Have you noticed a difference? I mean, I mean, obviously, the higher you go, um, the hitters mm-hmm. are going to get better. But have you seen like a big difference in you know how you're pitching guys from last year to this year? Yeah, guys, um, you know, some swings that I was getting last year's. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting those swings here. Um, so that's, you know, the, the whole pitch sequence thing has got to be on point. Um, you got to make guys chase, um, even though, you know, sometimes they're not going to. Um, you might throw a good pitch that you're wondering, what the hell, how did I not get a swing out of that? Um, and that I think that's the biggest thing is kind of, Especially with the slider and the and the, uh, the curveball, you know, when I'm I throw a nice curveball in there below the zone, and I'm not I'm getting a, a take on it, it kind of mind boggling a little bit, but uh, it's frustrating, right? Yeah, it's very frustrating. Like I'll, I'll mother like I'll throw. <laughs> I think yesterday when I I threw a pitch, a slider that was just I don't know how he didn't swing, and I got the ball back. Was like what what happened there? Like did did he glitch? Like what what's going on? <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. You just gotta, you know, be patient with these hitters cause they, they're going to be patient for sure. Well, you, so this morning when we were, we were talking before all this, you, you mentioned like struggling with the change up the last week mm-hmm. or so. And yeah, just thinking of like how important that pitch is. And it's something I know you give lessons, you know, in the off season, and uh-huh. it's a, something a lot of guys really harp on and I don't see it enough where it's, you know, fastball change up when you're younger, but like mm-hmm. even to where you're at now, the change up's such an important pitch because like you just said, those guys are, you know, they're just they're better hitters the higher you go. They can see yeah. they can see spin. Right. And nobody yeah. how many how many 
you know, curveballs are you thumping in there, you know, for strikes? You know what I mean? It, they're more for mm-hmm. swing and misses. Yeah, no, absolutely. So you're not yeah. lollipopping anything in there. So the changeups, I mean, a massive pitch for your repertoire to get guys out. Yeah, I, I think, you know, my changeup over the past few years has been, you know, my money pitch. I've been able, you, you can, you throw that pitch. That's just, you know, we always talk about it, it's the best pitch in baseball. You, it's just you're pulling the string on somebody, and if you can be able to dial that in, and, you know, I, I think if this, this baseball thing kind of can go a long way if you're able to be consistent with it. Yeah, um, I think that's yeah. a really important one you said, consistency, you know, like yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about location, and location's great if you can locate great, but like uh-huh. location from, to me, and it, especially in high school, you know, obviously you can – you've played a lot higher level. You can see how different it gets, but maybe it's the same for you guys now where location you want to, you want to, maybe you're going to go down and in on somebody, but if you, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to, it's always missed down. Right. So yeah. if, if you yeah. don't, if you don't hit in at least be down, like location yeah. isn't the end all be all right. As far as no. down and in, in the inside corner, like you don't have to spot everything. I think if you're, if you're spotting and you're trying to spot every pitch, you're going to get even more frustrated. You're probably going to throw more balls than you are strikes. And I don't know. I, I hear a lot of like, you know, location, location, location. Well, I mean, if anything, you know, down and in, down, even middle, but below the zone or a down and off the plate, as long as you're down, you could be effective. You could get the same result. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, like, that just goes, but like we were saying, consistency, you just got to be able to, you know, you can't spike it. You can't be striking it at every pitch. Cause now you guys are just you know, easy takes. This guy's not, able to, lo- or, you know, locate his, his change up, not being able to, you know, be consistent with it. We're throwing that out. We're not looking for that anymore. Like, we're, it's, that's the pitch that's it's not working. And so, that's the thing. You got to be consistent with that thing because you're consistent with that thing and, and you're going to have good outing. Right. If you're not, you're going to have long outing. So, what's the philosophy for you or, or the organization? Because I, I don't know anymore. Like, I, I can't, mm-hmm. like, I, like I said last episode, I feel like I'm in a twilight zone because the game's just so different now but like it's changing yeah. that o2 stuff one two like i was talking with roth about it and we were we were talking about how maddox with two strikes o2 one two count like he was even more aggressive in the zone yeah you know what i mean they're not uh, he wasn't wasting any pitches I, I know people don't like that term or like to do that but there's a lot yeah. of people that do and it's like nah i'm i'm, I'm even more aggressive with the hitter in, in as far as pitching to contact or making him, you know, swing at a pitch that is in my outpit. I don't know. He just a lot more aggressive in the zone. Are you kind of that mindset? I, yes, I, I love that mindset. Um, but that mindset is kind of bit me in the ass a little bit. Um, cause there's times I, I think my biggest thing has always been, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't finish the guy. I, I get Oh, two, one, two, and, you know, I try to throw a, a nasty pitch in the end zone and I get beat for a double or, you know, a, a bloop single. And those 0 2 one to go after this guy kind of have screwed me over, you know, my professional career. And I'm a big fan of, you know, the, uh, you know, you could waste a pitch here, you know. But it, not waste a pitch. You throw a competitive pitch. Right. It's got to be competitive. It can't be something that's an easy take. Guy's going to spit on it. <laughs> You're not it's doing like look. what they, you know, you've seen guys in high school in the past where they're throwing a fastball three and a half feet above the zone. Yeah, no, you got to throw uh, You got to throw a ball that looks like a strike. You know, that's what we talk about. You throw a ball that looks like a strike and o two one two. But I'm throwing strikes that look like strikes, so it's not, you know, it's not working out. Um, that's. I always like I get I get, especially I think yesterday too I I struggled with that a little bit I was getting guys o two one two and you know they were out I was getting out you know but it's just I'm getting barreled out and uh, it's just not fun I you know I I like the uh, I like the waste pitch waste wasting pitches not really wasting but I like throwing a competitive pitch that's right and I throw. think I think if it is you know that's a great way to say it too competitive pitch because. Depending on you know what happens on that O two or one two, you know, you set mm-hmm. up you can set up the next pitch off of it. You're n- you're not trying oh, to throw absolutely. an O two one two deliberately just so you can throw a pitch and nothing uh-huh. happen. Like if you you know it's, yeah. it's a competitive you pitch. I think that's up. yeah no that's 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 definitely the right uh, way to say it. I you know mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people hate using that term waste pitch, but dude you you know yeah. I was watching some of the videos in the last couple of weeks. Like the stuff looks good. Like it looks like you're attacking hitters and. 
I mean, yeah. you know, locating pretty well. And you said you got mm-hmm. a, you had a little rough up last week, but I mean that that's yeah. that's baseball, man. That's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. They're gonna yeah, will you no, back out right. there. Yeah, you always get you you know another opportunity to kind of go back on the field and make up for you know what happened. So, no, that's why I love this game and still playing it. So. Real, you know, I, I know you guys. You're at the ballpark now, getting ready to get out there. You're a couple hours mm-hmm. ahead of us. Uh, I want to just before you go get the get your take on the pitch clock stuff because I know you guys have to deal with it, and yeah. you know how it affects rhythm. You know, if you're struggling, it's kind of hard to get in a rhythm when you're you're being timed, and and when you are in a rhythm, I, I don't know. Like it just, how is it for you guys, even hitters? Like if you can get both sides of it. Yeah, um, you know, we we talk about it a lot. We we are not a fan of it. Um, had we had this in spring training, because we didn't even talk about it. We talked about it the like, last week of spring training is when it got brought up. We, it was never enforced in spring training, so we never got to really um, pitch with the pitch clock. Um, our first series, though, they had the pitch clock out, but they weren't enforcing anything. They were just kind of giving warnings like so you can get into the rhythm. But I want to be honest with you, with a three-game series, is not going to get you enough time to get used to that pitch clock because, you know, like we were talking about last week when I got lit up and got my lunch money taken by Springfield, I was on the mound and I'm getting hit left and right. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, usually when that happens, I step off the mound and I get a breather, try to gather myself, find something to, to bring me back to where I need to be. But at that, I, I, and I step on the mound, well, now I got three seconds left. Like, what's going on? Now, what if I want to shake off the catcher? I, I can't shake off the catcher now. Like, there's just so many things that this pitch clock has changed. Um, it, it's just it's being a pitcher. You your entire life, you've always been told this. You control the game. This is your mound. You deliver that ball when you want. The game doesn't start until you deliver the pitch. Well, now that's not the case anymore. Um, and so now we're, we feel like we're rushed. Um, when outings start to, you know, innings start to, you get hit around a little bit, it, it's hard to come back from that because, you know, you got three seconds left on the clock. Yeah, what are you going to do? You, that's kind of weird to hear that. I don't understand why that wasn't in spring training. That makes yeah, no sense to me whatsoever. Spring, we didn't have it in spring training. We kind of got out here and was like, hey, look, this is what's happening. We had a meeting about a, a week before spring training ended that they were enforcing this. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal because we did have a pitch clock last year but it was nothing to this extent um, I think we had an absurd amount of time actually um, so we kind of were like alright it's going to be fine but it's it's kind of it's it's shitty it's plain and simple it's I shitty. mean yeah I, even I, the, well yeah the hitters it affects the, both sides yeah. So we, we we like to talk because, you know, we like to get their take on it on, you know, because obviously if, we, if we're talking to them, they're talking to us, it helps us out, you know, on both sides of the, the game. Um, and they, they said they, they feel rushed too because if they're – so this is the rule. If there's nobody on base, you have 14 seconds as the pitcher. And as the hitter, you have nine seconds to be in the box. And not only do you have to be in the box, but you have to be engaged with the pitcher. So if you're in the box at nine seconds and you're looking at home plate doing whatever you got to do, that's strike because you're not engaged with the pitcher. We had a couple guys get uh, some strikeouts last week in, in Springfield because they weren't engaged with the pitcher. It's just, it's just I don't know. They want to speed up the game, which, I mean, it's it's been working. Um, I think – there was an article that came out a couple of weeks ago saying all of these games have been cut down by 30 minutes, which, I mean, is good for the sport, you know. But is it is it really? Like, have you talked to anybody I mean, that really cares about how the length of the games? Have you ever had a conversation with friends, uh, family, other players? Yeah. Has there ever been a conversation that's taken place where you've discussed I, I how long the, the games 30, are? The 30-minute cut-down time isn't that big of a cut down time yeah you're right um you know a lot of people complain the baseball you know it's long but it's yeah but if i'm driving to, if i'm in fresno california and i'm uh, driving to san francisco for three hours do you think i care about 30 minutes 
No, not one bit. Not one bit. And, I mean, that's the Oakland, you name it. Mm-hmm. You know, even at that, I, I just, personally, I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's because you're, you're a baseball fan, you know what I mean? You you want to see you're here because but you want to watch so the you know what it's it just, take. It's like they're catering to the non-baseball fan. They don't care either yeah, way. They want, they they're want gonna more go, people in the game. They're going to go to the beer garden, and they're going to leave in the sixth or seventh because they, they don't they never want to beat the game in the first place. It was you're, a hangout, yeah, and, they're, and they're grabbing a drink, and they're cutting out. I, I, it, why, you're not wrong whatsoever. We're changing the game for that? Yeah. Nah, I, I'm not a fan. Hey, what about the care. what about the baseball too? You're hearing all this crap on the baseball. Is yeah, we have. Uh, so this is a deal. We had the first third of the season. The ball that we're pitching with right now has a tacky substance on it. Um, from I can attest for our pitching staff. Most of our guys absolutely love it. Is it the same um, as the big league ball though? Because they're complaining about the big league ball. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we so yeah, we're playing with major league balls. Double uh, A got. Uh, we're playing with uh, major league balls. It's, I, I believe it's the same thing. I, I, I'm not sure on terms of what they're putting on their ball, but so for our first third of the season, we have this tacky substance ball. The second third is uh, a regular ball. Balls that we've been playing with. You can have a juice baseball. Okay. Different. That's what it is. And then the last, the last third is like a more juiced baseball. They're spraying something on the ball. I don't know. I haven't felt one of those, but they're spraying something on the ball. Well, I mean, they're, they're it's all just to see how the offense goes, and yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's crazy, man. I I, I was mm-hmm. just curious to hear all that stuff, but uh, I'm I'm a fan of the ball. The slider's gone a lot better because of it. <laughs> so. No, nah, man, I, 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 yeah, I just, you keep, I just hearing about guys talking about how they hated the ball and all that stuff, but yeah, some guys hate it, but I think it is yeah, what it I'm, is. I'm, I'm fair. Who do you guys got tonight? We got Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. Uh, yeah, that's right. You guys are the, this is the Texas league, of course. So, uh, yeah, we're one on one right now. We lost Tuesday, one yesterday. Um, going out tonight. So, well, I appreciate, I, I appreciate you call, let me yeah, get on get you on the horn here, man, and talk a little bit today. I know you're busy at the ballpark. You guys are getting ready to go here in like 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Well, keep me posted, man. It's always a pleasure to yeah, talk you know, to you. Don't let and I saw Paulinelli KP throwing shade at you on Twitter. Don't don't He's, that's all he does. All he does is talk. <laughs> don't let him. He, you got to defend he, yourself. You got to fight a back. Big chihuahua. He. <laughs> That's what he is. He talks. He talks. I'll make sure he listens to hear it. <laughs> All right, Gambo. Well, you guys, you guys have a good, uh, you know, good rest of the way. We'll talk. We'll talk before the season ends, obviously. Yeah, we'll but catch uh, up. but uh, keep grinding, man, and uh, keep me posted on how you're feeling. And we'll be talking soon, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, I always appreciate you calling. Thank you. you I'll talk it. to you later. All right, bud. Peace out, buddy. And so you know, like I said, <laughs> while there was a, the good with Miguel Cabrera in his 3,000 hit, there was a lot of bad. Or more bad than good. I don't want to say a lot. You had the Yankee fans hosting Cleveland. And I just want to start here because it was everywhere. It's obviously died down here. We're later in the week. But uh, late in the game, ball hit to left field. Stephen Kwan tries to make a play on it. Uh, runs into the fence. And it starts with you know fans yelling, you know, certain things uh, to an injured player, chirping at an injured player, uh, you know, not sure of, you know, how hurt he is. And Miles Straw is out there and, and scales the fence and chirps right back and defends his teammate. And uh, had some choice words. I'm sure you've seen on social media what he had to say to the fan. And I don't blame him from one bit for being emotional and angry about it. And I, I love the fact that he owned it. And uh, said he would do it again if that situation happened again. You know, he would he would go back and say the same thing and uh, defend his teammate regardless. And uh, I, I love it. I no need to be uh, apologetic for that. Like, you, there's no need to apologize, and he wasn't. And uh, he stood his ground. And, you know, I think their opinion of, of if you're a fan, chirp. That's part of the game. Go ahead. You know, it's what all teams do it. All fan bases do it. 
Uh, it was the stuff at the end of the game. A walk-off uh, win for the Yankees, and fans begin to throw beer cans, food, trash, whatever you... Just a multiple multiple things out onto the field. And uh, obviously, the Indians took exception to it. And, you know, you saw Judge and Stanton and Yankee players running out to right field to stop it, to cool it down, to back them off, and as they should. And it's just, like, you can't do that stuff. And I know, like, Drew Mattis has been on here, a couple friends of, you know, Walden, a couple buddies of ours, uh, have talked about being in that environment at Yankee Stadium and and hearing the crowd and how they respond is to pitchers and, and our other players. And, and, again, most fan bases are, are passionate and rough on the opposing team, especially in the outfield. I've seen it in not even just professional sports, but college sports. It's, you know, there's there's sometimes fans can be brutal. I don't know, and I think it's come out, like, I don't, you don't consider, you can't lump all Yankee fans into the select few that acted like complete dirtbags and did something really shitty. Like, I just, I'm not going to lump all Yankee fans into that group. You can't do it. After the game, Straw called the Yankees fans the worst fan base on the planet. And... You know, he's frustrated. You know, they had the inning, couple innings prior with, with Quan in the outfield and left field there, and then they have that happen. They, you lost the game on top of it. Yeah. But I, I want, that, that term or that label, worst fan base in all of sports or all of baseball, on the planet, I'm sorry, on the planet, could be up for debate. Because you also saw, again, more bad, Dodgers and Padres fans brawling out in the pavilion in San Diego. And the Dodgers have had a history of of this. They've had a couple incidents with fans. Uh, I'm sure every team has their moments. Obviously, the Dodgers are more publicized. It is what it is. That's just how how it rolls. I know the Giants have had some some, uh, fisticuffs during their games. Um... It's debatable. Like you, you've I've heard people call Raiders fans uh, the worst on the planet. You know, I I think that's an actually really good question of who <laughs> who has the worst fan base on the planet. Because I I don't really know. I know <laughs> growing up here in the Fresno area and going to Fresno State Bulldog football games, I've seen some crazy stuff out at the Bulldogs games. You know, out in the parking lots, walking into the stadium because there's there's no parking lot really, and so as a fan, you've got to find a spot and you're walking into the stadium, and if you're the opposing team, I mean, they Fresno fans don't give two shits; they'll let you know. Uh, and I can tell you that I've been to uh, Boise State, Fresno State, I think three times, and twice have walked through the tailgate areas at Boise State. Wearing Fresno stuff by myself or with my my buddy who who lives there, uh, and literally not get roasted one bit. It's and maybe shame on them. I'm sure Dogs Barstool would have a a comment for that, but shame on on the Boise State crowd. Like literally, I walked through the entire spot of people tailgating and didn't get razzed once. Just stares, like just looks. I mean, there's no way that's happening in Fresno. Zero. But I think that's an excellent question uh, to poll, is who's who's the worst fan base on the planet? Uh, according to Miles Straw, it's the Yankees. And listen, they're rough. I've heard some stories, again, from some friends that have been there and, and uh, have dealt with it firsthand. And, uh, yeah, the Yankees fans are rough. I get it. But uh, I've also heard Philly fans, you know, the, the Eagles. <laughs> so... Who knows who the worst fan base is? I'm sure everybody has an opinion, and I would I would love to hear it. Uh, go send us a message on Twitter or on Instagram, uh, at Hit or Die on Instagram, and at Hit or Die Podcast on Twitter. Let us know who you think the worst fan base is. Hey, a little, little surprise to the podcast today. Uh, a good friend, Major League Baseball uh, scout for the Red Sox, 
uh, Fresno State Bulldog, Montreal Expo, right? Or were you, were you both with the Nationals and Expos? I don't remember. I played. I got to the big leagues with the Expos, but I played with the Nats the first first part of the Nats when they came in. So. Uh, Josh Labandera joining us, my good buddy. How you doing, bud? Are you you sound like you're on the road. Always, man. Al- always, Lynch time, baby. Always, <laughs> always on the road. Hey, I was just gonna, I was just gonna get into, and I was like, I gotta call Lab. Gonna get into the offensive numbers coming down. I think Monday I saw a tweet about how you know the league batting average, league OPS, slugging all that. I think the league batting average is two thirty one right now. Uh, OBP is three oh eight. Slugging was three sixty eight. Everything's down. And I went. And I wanted to take some numbers, just a current, you know, as they are into two, three weeks into the season. Uh, so as of today, this is before the tonight's games. It's Thursday, April twenty eighth. There's been eighteen thousand thirty four at bats. So with two thirty one, it's twenty three percent of the those abs are, are hits. Of those hits. There's 492 home runs. So of those hits, 12% of those hits are home runs. Out of those 18,000 at-bats and the 492 home runs, that's 2.75%. Do you think we're going well, about the approach the wrong way? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you can say, Simon. So. I mean, we're just seeing like a, this is just like, this is what had. This is the outcome of launch angle and, and uh, swinging uphill and all or nothing swings. I mean, uh, you don't. You very rarely see a hitter hitting to the situation anymore. Um, there's there's just no approach, man. Like, I, and it's starting out at the lower levels. Like that. That's just those are the big league numbers, man. Like college baseball, I would imagine. <laughs> is somewhere around there. We're not seeing um, as good college baseball. And then even a lot of the high school baseball I'm watching, um, you know, normally you see certain programs that, that swing the bat really well. Like not seeing a lot of hitters, man. Seeing a lot of kids really just trying to hit homers, man. And um, Obviously at the big league level, when they're watching it on TV every night and that's every time a guy hits the ball in the air, like you're hearing launch angle and exit velocity, uh, it's just, I don't know, man, like, I, I just think we're ingraining something way, way wrong in these kids' heads uh, at a young age. And now uh, baseball's taken a big hit for the past couple of years, but with the direction it's going. So we're just seeing the direct result of it now um, kind of coming. What? Getting into where what? We're like, what, two and a half, three years into this launch angle like, yeah, like like about. it's like sellout, die hard, getting into it. Yeah, it's it's I think it's about that three four years. Yeah, I mean now we're just starting to see like you know I don't know man. Look at what a lot of these look at what I I have to be real careful like when I start of course talking about of course this, um just because I don't want to get in trouble with my club. But <laughs> yeah, you I repre- guess you represent an just starting to see a lot more different philosophies and, and different uh, concepts being taught in, um, from maybe some, you know, maybe from more of a numbers perspective than actual an experience perspective per se. Um, and, and what really works. Um, I don't know, man, like we're seeing some of the best basketball players and contact hitters in the world um, not make contact. And I feel a lot of it's because of, the way they're trying to make that contact right the philosophy of how they're going about playing yeah. the game not even just hitting but how they how they want to score runs like i so even to further that the number like and this is again these you're right these are big league stats out of those eighteen thousand at bats there's 4536 strikeouts which is about 25 percent disgusting so we went it's we got, went from you, an era where swinging and missing was unpopular to now it's just it's okay it's okay to swing and miss and I don't know how it's okay not to put the ball in play where you actually have a chance of something happening to get on base uh, bad hop air uh, errant throw um, hell guy runs hard enough he might beat beat the damn ball out 
Uh, well, then I mean, the, there's Dodgers, so much more that can happen. the Dodgers huh? just got walked off because of a errant throw from a pitcher, I think. You know, exactly. I mean, God put the ball in play, man. Things happen. Um, put the ball in play, things happen. Uh, gosh, I, I we don't even see guys u- utilizing a tool. Like, speed used to be like this massive tool in the game. The guy that could, that could bunt, the guy that could get on base, uh, impact the bases, put pressure. But nobody cares uh, about that stuff anymore. We're just looking for the long ball, dude. Uh, and the games are starting to become boring. I, I hate, can't believe I'm saying that, but I am. Is it the game or is it the length of the game? Again, I'm I'm big on this. I've I've been I've bitched about it a lot. About I'm not on board with the shortening the game time. I don't care. So you have now you have a boring game, and now you're watching all these rules implemented. It's 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 it's. I, can you even watch it? Can you remember the last time you heard the announcer say that there was a hit? Oh, there was a hit and run right there. <laughs> what was the last time you heard a hit and run? Maybe in the playoffs, like two years ago. In the playoffs, why? Yeah. Right? Because they play they play college baseball in the playoffs. Like everything matters in the in the playoffs. Like you know, like that runner on first base matters. Like you see, guys completely change their whole approach come playoff time. Uh, and I think it's funny when you listen to some of these. He's hitting, dude. Look at the game where we're at. We have the most technology. You have all this data. You have all these gurus, and the numbers suck. So, dude, what's a certified guru anymore? So you're certified what? You don't. Anyone I'm certified that's what not to hit. So, dude, you're anybody can get certified. Your mom can go get certified. Your little sister can get certified. What is what? What is the certif- What is the certification? Who came up with? Uh, who's the credentialing king of the certification? Like, well, can I? Uh, so here's the short answer. Well, I'll, I'll I'll answer it with a question. Do you have to pay for the certification? One hundred percent. Then there it is. It's a money grab. It doesn't mean shit. Because you know how to does, work the yeah. software. You know how to read. It. I'm not saying. And listen, I've 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 said it on here before. You might have to go dig deep into old episodes to hear it. I'm not against what it can bring to the table and mechanically and making adjustments and the spin rate stuff. I don't think it's all bad, but I don't think all these people using it can use it correctly or know how to make adjustments from it. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because uh, I don't know, man. Like I'm not, I, you know, and people probably think I'm like totally against it. I'm not a big fan of uh, of launch angle or. I don't honestly. I really don't believe in launch angle. Like you want to talk exit. I'm not in it either. Exit velo. Okay, I buy into some exit velo. But hey, man, where's the where's the contact rate? Because if you can't create a high amount of contact, your exit velo doesn't mean shit. Well, um, and does it matter? Me. Does it matter? They measure it off of a T. Like who? Right. Oh, that's really. Like that's it. It goes yeah. back to another thing. I, I was gonna. I brought this up to you. I think a couple weeks ago. I was talking to a couple players. And they were like, oh, yeah, this is so-and-so rakes. And I was it's a, a totally different set of guys. And they were, and one of the kids was like, oh, yeah, so-and-so rakes. Two different guys rake. And when I looked into it, one guy was hitting like 248. And the other guy was hitting like 260. And I'm like, in high school, that's not raking. No. That's not, you don't no. rake. Let's be honest. He rakes in batting practice. I'm going to be honest, man. Dude, if you hit 300 in high school, then, like you're, you don't rake. Like, no. Like, people that rake in high school, they hit the high fours, four, 500. Like, uh, I mean, God, I had a kid. This was probably the most remarkable numbers I ever had. I had a kid last year out of Modesto. Dude, he hit like 750 on the season. Yeah, that's... You talk about like dominating. Yeah, he had like 1,800 OPS. I've never, I've, I've never submitted numbers to my bosses that were so obs- obscene like that. Um, Where they didn't believe like you almost. Are you drunk today? Like it, no, it's like listen, man. Like these guys don't like. If you're committed to a division one and you're not dominating your opponents, like dominating, like I'm talking about, you get in the box, like you're bail, you're, like you're hitting the ball hard consistently. You're not going to play at the division one. Not, not as a freshman, pal. I hate to break their little hearts, but they're not going to. They're not going to like. You got to hit balls hard, dude. Like you got to be dominating your, your your competition and when i mean dominating like the other guys that are going d1s you're holding your own against them you're not getting blown up or, or getting hammered by them so 
maybe I got off on a whole different subject. No, not at all. Not at all. I was just thinking about like, you know, just different stuff. Like the the launch egg. I'm with you. I'm I'm not all in on it either. And and just you know, you guess- you see the the exit velo measured from like perfect game, and they're using a T. Oh, who cares? My my definition of raking is when I watch a kid. First off, the kid's gonna probably control his at bat. Like he's gonna dictate what he wants to swing at when he wants to swing at it. And when he does swing at it, he's hitting it hard wherever that pitch may be. Um, and and there's like he has a certain presence about him in the box too. Like I don't throw the word raking out. Like I don't throw the word legit around very often or the word dude. Like. This end, like people around our area have become so loose in how they say that. Oh, that guy's a dude. Well, when I say dude, like I think I'm going to give that guy a couple million dollars. That's what a dude means to me. Uh, the word legit is another big word that you, it's hard to throw around. Um, you know, and you don't use it every year. There's not 10 legit dudes every year, or there's not 10 dudes every year. Uh, so the word raking to me mean, might mean something totally different to someone else. Um, well, and so. to those, and like, no, I, dude, I agree 100%. And the, the, the easy pushback answer that everybody gets, because listen, I don't think there's an argument and we've said it here again, that players are bigger, stronger, faster than they've ever been. That, doesn't, sure. that doesn't equate to their good baseball players. It's just rebel. I've been saying that's like, everything's relevant to the era that you're in. Um, and that's like, a debate people love to have. Well, and that's what I was getting to. The, the 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 response to all the numbers being down is the easy answer is or excuse is that pitching's gotten better or pitching's better today than it was 20 years ago. And I just I don't necessarily agree with that. No, hey, I might lose you a little bit here. I'm kind of in this little area. It's all good. Uh, it's all good. But no, hey, there's no doubt. But- Average fastball, 100%. It's gone up. Like guys are spinning the ball more effective, effectively with more power, 100%. But these guys are also pretty damn good hitters. I'm sorry. Like, are you telling me that? Like, let's look at where are all the shifts geared to. Are they geared to the opposite field? Or are they geared to the pull side? The pull side. The pull side. So you're telling me that a hitter can't let the ball travel? Like you're like you're not. They're going to throw you away and you can't hit it to the opposite field? Like, I'm sorry, dude. You're one of the best hitters in the world uh, at the highest level. You can do that. You just choose not to. Why? Because you're not going to get paid the same. Um, And they say that that's what people want. But when I hear that, like, I don't think real fans show up and want to see seven home runs in the ballgame. I think a real baseball fan shows up and actually wants to see a ballgame. They want to see some activity, some action, hitting and running pitching out uh, a guy dropping a bunt down uh, a double steal something like that kind of shit's exciting to me dude sitting back and watching guys swing out their ass that's not very fun or or watching a guy like half ass the ball on a defensive play uh, or, or or jog down the line like i don't know that shit's not fun to me uh, or exciting uh, action's exciting I, so, I i definitely agree with you i just go back to 20 years ago and it's like well, Randy Johnson was pretty good. Greg Maddox was pretty good. Pedro Martinez and Roger Clemens and Kerry Wood and Smoltz and Eric Gagne and Billy Wagner. Like there was closers that threw hard back in the day. Kevin Brown, hundred percent. Like Joel Joel Zamaya in '06 was Rob Nin. Rob Nin. Yeah, Rob Nin. Go, Rob Dibble was a gas thrower. Yeah, through the threw hard. I mean, everybody like there was velocity back then. It wasn't on the on the entire scale like not everybody has like nowadays dude you turn the tv on and everybody out of like you look at every all i mean damn near everybody out of the bullpen buzzing 94 95 uh, but it, again like, i'm thinking about these names these are uh, some of that list is hall of famers like they were efi- they were efficient and they were effective i've seen three games this week where the starting pitcher was at 85 plus pitches getting into the fifth to the absolutely you know that's not efficient no, whatsoever. And, you know, like starting pitching, like I don't think people realize like how hard it is to be a starting pitcher. Like you need to throw anywhere between 60 and 65% of your pitches for a strike. And like for all you young high school pitchers out there that might listen, dude, get off your velocity wagon, man. Like that's something that's going to come to you. 
Like being able to throw strikes is a craft. It's an art. Um, and, and, and as you mature, now your body is going to develop that extra strength. That's going to get your velocity up there that, which makes you that much deadlier. Look at Bieber. Bieber always could spot up, right? Now all of a sudden the guy gets to a little bit more velocity and he becomes a different, whole different animal, but without throwing strikes, he's not that kind of animal. Um, you know, and, and strikes are premium, dude. They're, God, dude, I can't tell you how, 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 how much, how important it is for guys to throw strikes. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, man. Like oh, I, I was having I, the velocity wagon, something kids are going to get to. And I just, I think they try to get to it too quickly at some times, you know? Uh, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, well, it's because it's what's sexy right now. It, it, oh, 100%. It, you know, it sells, it gets you paid. It's what, it's whatever. It's, it's easy to market that. Um, I was having this conversation with Gamboa earlier about, you know, we were talking about locating too. And it's like location, you know, being able to locate is money like Maddox made a living off of that but also you know like it, you don't have to spot I don't I, I mean it like in high school terms like because that's what I deal with a lot or dealt with a lot is is high school pitchers is you don't have to spot and be perfect with that like if it's down and in you know and you you know be, as long as you're down you can still end up with that same result if you don't, if you miss middle but down or away and down, you can still get that ground ball to get it out. Like, if you're focused on just one location, one spot, I guarantee you, you're gonna be, you're not gonna be pitching very well. You're gonna be throwing a lot of balls. Well, and you know, you start talking about to a guy like, what are you? Can you actually see the location you're trying to throw throw to? I, I see all these guys that are trying to the throw so on the hard. ground. They don't even know where- yeah. They don't even know where their target's at because their head's weaving, bobbing and weaving and their head whacking and, and it's max effort. Like, you know, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I'm, I really wish the kids would, 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 whatever happened to putting up the, uh, the old tire out in the backyard, dude. You throw that tire around. You try to try to throw the baseball through the tire. Now it's like, man, guys can't even hit the tire. Yeah. No, and I, uh, I just, dude. I remember taking that from Augie Garrido. Just remember him say, telling a guy, like, it's okay. Like, you know, if you miss, we can miss. You know, typically you miss, want to miss down anyways. But I'm just saying as far as location goes, like, you want to locate, sure. But, you know, you can miss. I mean, there's a constant. Good hitters have the constant at middle. So, like, either they're looking middle away or they're looking middle in. Like, you miss middle, you're going to get whacked. Like, that, that's kind of, you know, if you watch, watch the highlights every night when they're chilling those whole runs, dude. If that catcher, most of the time, he's setting up on either corner. <laughs> yeah. And that glove yeah. starts floating back over towards the middle of the plate, and then pow, the ball's gone. Like, you know, it's just something like, if you're going to miss, don't miss in the middle, baby. It's kind of like throwing a football in the middle of the football field late. Like, nothing good's probably going to come up. Yeah. Or back so, across the field. Yeah. Uh, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Throw it back across the field. Or, um, so, I just, it, everything's such an extreme today, too. It seems like, man, it's, you got to throw hard, swing hard. And, um, you know, I don't know, man. It's just we're, we're in a kind of really funky state. Um, and then you've got guys that have been around and played for years. Like, their voice doesn't matter. or Their voice is, is not deemed uh, worthy by the certified guru. Well, you're a dinosaur. So, you're a dinosaur. Yeah, like, uh, oh, you don't know. It was different. No, it's not. Like, I, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I always – kind of try to follow up on hitting and, and, and that way I, you know, you want to stay in the day, you want to know what's going on and what they're teaching and all this stuff. But like, I, I look at this, I was, I, I looked at this diagram, this guy was dissecting this, this swing and he's using the terms hip hinge and anchoring. Dude, that's, man, I can't say what I, that's basic ass shit that we talked about since the fucking, they started talking about hitting dude, like hip hinge, Dude, that's just staying in your legs and, and using your backside, man. There's no need for this fancy terminology. It's oh, and, all jargon. Oh, he's, an, he's anchoring his front side. Anchoring? Oh, you mean he, he's hitting against some his a firm front side, right? That's anchoring. Oh, so you're you you've created this whole new lingo to basically like what you said, man. It's like uh, you're selling this gimmicky bullshit that. We all know has existed forever. You're just saying in a different, fancier way. Um, like, 
I don't know, man. Like, if you want to be a good hitter, dude, I'd look at hitters like Wade Boggs, Tony Gwynn, Edgar Martinez, Manny Ramirez, guys that use the whole diamond. Uh, they would look at Tony Gwynn's stats, man. Somebody, one of my buddies told me that Tony Gwynn wouldn't do what he did today. I said, are you kidding me? He'd have 5,000 hits if they shifted him. Yeah, like, Tony he probably Gwynn, could, I said, yeah. dude, I started laughing. I said, you telling me that Tony Gwynn couldn't flip the ball around the yard off these pitchers today? He was like, oh, it'd be different, dude. they throw too hard. I'm like, They threw hard back know. then, though. Exactly. That's what, that's what exactly. I don't understand. Like I yeah. said, Joel Zamaya hit 104 and 06. I think Chapman hit 105 and, and 10 in 2010. I hate to be my amigo. He threw the Nolan Ryan didn't throw hard. Bob Feller, Bob Gibson, Satchel Page, Steve uh, Carlton didn't throw hard, 98 miles an hour. The big no, train, no, Walter Johnson hard, didn't yeah. throw hard. No, nobody threw hard, man. And just Remember, throwing hard just started. Everything. We're reinventing everything these days. So. You know what else it is? Is that the, the the younger group don't go back and, and research. They know nothing of history. It's pretty... Yeah, man, I'm, I'm not going to try it. No, I'm like, no I know. Players, That's a whole no. episode. That's a whole podcast by itself. But, I'll ask those guys sometimes or I'll throw a name out of some player and I'll get a blank stare and it's like, man, I just scratch my head. Like, dude, how do you not know who that guy is? Roberto Alomar was one. Like, I asked an infielder, how do you not know who Roberto Alomar is, dude? Like, It's not even that, that long ago. Really good, that guy was a really good second baseman. Like, yeah, it wasn't really even that long ago. Switch hit, like. <laughs> could really play like man i don't know but uh it's it's a different era we're in dude most of these kids commit to schools that they go to they don't even know what former big leaguers did there shit half of them can't even tell you what the school's record was last year i i, I hate to say it but it's the truth yeah it's twilight zone i'm telling you people I, I mean, I got a, a lot of good feedback from the last episode. Guys. That's what it was. Because that's what I feel like. I feel like, you know, when you're coaching, I've been coaching for so long. And last year we're coaching. And I'm not so much caught up in all the outside stuff. And I'm finally not on a field every day. And I have more time to look at things, follow things, read things, see highlights, watch games. And it's like, son of a bitch. This has been, this been going on the whole time? And yeah, I, I feel like I'm in another world. Well, it, it's it's just get it, it's uh it's a big racket, man. I mean, there's just a lot of and I I don't know, man. I get in a lot of discussions with people, and people know like I'm not the biggest fan of travel ball. Do I? I think it's good or bad. It's, it's great that these kids are playing and, and it's fun and everything, but you know, there's a big they lose sight of what travel ball really is, man. Like. Uh, you're paying for your innings. Like you, you are paying. You're paying to play. You're paying to be on a team. You're paying for your at bats. You're paying to pitch. And they have a really hard time when they go to their high schools because now nobody can pay for innings. Now you have to earn your innings. You have to earn your time. You have to earn your at bats. And in in this era of entitlement, we see. A lot of people struggle with that. That ends up turning into transferring and, and going where there's, you know, I don't know, man. It's just, dude, like, if you're not ready, you're not, you got to get better, man. It's the bottom line. Like, because at some point you get to where you can't, you're going to get exposed and you're not going to play. So you have to play better if you want to do certain things and move on. Uh, there's not always going to be that opportunity where you go get on this extra team over here and, and play. Well, I don't know, man. It's frustrating. I love it, though. I love it. We, I need, I, w- I wish you, I, just hearing you talk about it, I love it. Because you're so, uh, in dude, my opinion, I, you're it, right it on the money. There's, no, there's nothing it, to argue about. It's just like all these transferring. People People forget that big leaguers and high draft picks come from everywhere. Hey, you know, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm not trying to say anything negative about any league or whatnot, but who's the highest player drafted out of the track was what Jacob Gaming probably, right? Yes. Okay, well, that year, what player went higher and what, was he from a track school or was he from a county school? He was from the CMAC and it was Ortiz. He's, he's, he's Ortiz went the first, he went to Sanger High School. Went to Sanger, Sanger yeah. Like, 
you're not going to sit here and tell me that. Well, you oh, had you uh, had Salazar out of Kerman that's going. The highest play drafter in the track has was been McKay Christian. Well, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That was '93. Dude. We haven't had a player drafted inside the top thirty years. Rounds the tracks. Yes, exactly. Since that year, hey, there's just a big misconception on. Oh well, oh my kids, it's going to be better for them. No, dude. Like if you can hit '95, you can hit '95. No matter if you're playing at Sanger, uh, Madera South, um, Buchanan, Clovis East, it doesn't matter, dude. If you can hit, you can hit. Like. Your stock does not become greater because you put a Buchanan uniform on or a Clovis West uniform on or a, a, a Central uniform. You don't become a better player. Or you're not a better player because you play for this special travel team. Hey, by the way, did you tell everybody that you had to pay about six grand to get that uniform? Oh, you left that part out. You know, and man, it's just, dude, I want to vomit with all this stuff. It's just disgusting at times. I don't even know, dude. You would just mic drop right there. Mic drop it. What's that? I'm just, I'm just, I love it. I'm telling you, I love it. I think it's, to me, that there's nothing I could argue with. There's nothing that you just said that I would be like, nah, you're wrong, or I have a problem with, no, none of it. None of it. And I don't think, I don't even think it's old school mentality. I think it's just, you look at it, you, it's just logic. Now, I mean, whatever happened to, whatever happened to kids being proud of playing for the city that they're from? Uh, or the high school that they're from. Dude, you know that I it, 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 it saddens me that I actually have to put, when I invite kids to, to travel for their scout team, that, hey, you are not allowed to wear your travel ball gear. I want to see you in your high school. Say. It, it saddens me that I actually have to put that in there, and then, then I still have kids that show up with that shit on. And I tell them, dude, I'm, I'll send you home. Or, dude, last year I made a kid turn it inside out. I gave him a different hat. I don't want to see their practice. I don't give a shit who they play for. Like that's not gonna that's not gonna help them make, make my team or or change my opinion of them because they have on. Oh, I play for some special team. We went to North Carolina. What do you do, bro? I could give two shits. That doesn't mean you're faster. That doesn't mean you have more bat speed than the guy over here that didn't. Does it? I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but tools are tools, dude. Doesn't matter where you come from. Like. If, Good players. Where's Darren Erstad from? Where North Dakota? Something like that. Fuck. They come from. They come from anywhere, Saldani. You know, like and it boils down to the kid, man. It doesn't boil down to what uniform they wear. So, sorry, man. I've been on my whole travel ball tangent, but yeah, no, I've been I, waiting a long time to get that shit off my chest. I wish you were sitting here so we could do it together. Uh, another on another day. On we, another no, day. we will. We will. And I, I'm glad you joined me and, and took the call and. and Talked a little bit about said we were talking hitting, but it just uh, evolved into something even better. I appreciate it, man. I love hearing you talk, uh, your experience and just being involved and around the game for as long as you have, man. I learned something different. I'll tell you that. I, I'm, I'm still learning, and uh, I just I love talking to guys like you that that get to see it every day, man. It's for people out there that they may not like to hear it, but I mean, you literally your job is to find players uh, that are going to benefit your organization, and you're out there evaluating players daily. So people may not like what you have to say, but I would listen to it. That's all. Dude, it's just, I mean, the truth is the best thing you can give people. Like, you know, for me to sit around and blow smoke up people's ass and tell them they're this and that kind of player, I'm at the end of the day, I'm not doing that player any justice because now he's going to go home thinking like he's, he's there. I've made it. No, dude, you haven't found it. And, and the road's so long and it's so it's so freaking hard, dude. Um, and then to get the big leagues, much much less. God damn, dude. It's it's a you gotta love it, bro. And I think a lot of kids like it, and they like the idea of it. They don't really grasp like what it takes. Yeah, well, I, so, I'll I'll let you go with this because, and you can give me your opinion on it. I, I was thinking as a coach, and I'm talking to Roth about it, Rothford. Uh, you know, I, I tend to notice the guy that doesn't look like all the rest. You know, doesn't have his his haircut all mohawked out or mullet or whatever the new new look is or trending look. The big sunglasses or, you know, his mannerisms are different. Or like the guy that wears his pants three inches above his knee. If I see the guy that's opposite of that, that's they're starting, like I, that intrigues me. Like I'm interested about who, who? Wait, wait, wait! What is this? Who's this kid? 
He's not a follower. You know, that's why, like, Chad and I always go back to Jason Donald because yeah. his game mattered first. All day, every day, man. That's why Jason is and who. That's why he was who he was and is who he is today as a person. Um, I mean, he was, he, he, was, he was a very good model to look at. If you're a young player and you had an opportunity to, to watch Jason in high school or, or maybe get around him one time when he came home, you know, we were in the midst of playing professional baseball and, and this kid was damn near out working us on days, you know, like he just had a, he had an excellent work ethic. He was very mature for his age and he was going, you know, he was very goal, goal driven. Like he knew what he wanted to do and exactly. he was going to reach his goals. Right. Um, yeah. and, and, and there was no fluff, dude. It wasn't like he didn't, you know, he might've been rated the number one prospect in, in Northern California. He never would have told you. He never would have acted like it. He would have acted like he was the 30th best prospect trying to become the best prospect. You know, like he was never satisfied. He always stayed hungry and, and, and wanted to get better. Like he never felt like he truly arrived. And Hey man, I don't know, dude, there's something to be said about that. And that's why and I'm not, I'm not it. saying the guys that do, you know, kind of look the I'm not saying they're followers. I'm just saying there's something different about a guy that doesn't care about any of yeah. that stuff that has is just yeah. as good as the guy that does. For some reason that yeah. guy stands out to me over the guys that look the part. Cuz I've seen a when lot of guys look the, the part that suck. Dude, when I show up at the park and I think you're, you would agree, like I want to notice you for how you play, like how you throw the ball, how you move around. I don't want to notice you because you've got yellow hair or you have uh, 15 wristbands on, you're wearing uh, softball uh, shorts with your stirrups up to your uh, jock strap. Like, I, I, I want to notice you for what kind of player you are, man. All that other stuff, that's like a false, it's like fake, dude. You're, you're, you're faked me. Uh, the worst one is the, the sunglasses on the back of your hat. Like, dude, I'm going to get like, why the fuck do you have the sunglasses on your head if they're on the back of your fucking head, dude? It's so stupid to me. Like, put your sunglasses on your face so when the ball goes in the air and the sun's there, that's what they're there for. Or don't wear Like, this is, dude, this isn't a fucking uh, fashion show, dude. Like, God, that, like I said, man, I'm, Coach Bennett used to go over, like, why we wear the uniform and, and what it served its purpose for it. Dude, we wore sunglasses at Fresno State. He was never opposed to them, but you wore them, dude. You don't put them on the top of your hat so you could show everybody, oh, look, I got these glasses. Well, that's cool, dude. You look like a bagel. Well, like Take that shit off your when, head on your face. When you see stuff like that, do you? is it like a sense of like, you it's know. A turn off. Or like it's a, a little bit, off. like a sign of immaturity maybe? Yes. it's a it, Dude, it's honestly, man, it's a, it's a sign that they're, they want more attention. Like, look at me. It's a look at me thing, dude. Yeah. It's so tiring. And hey, man, there's a lot of kids that, that, that I watch and I know that that have that look. I'm sorry, fellas, but it's, dude, let your attention be your game. Let your attention be your swing. Let your attention be driving the ball over the right center field fence if you're a right-handed hitter or, or stealing three bags. Dude, don't make your attention be, oh, look at me because I have fancy gear and I look the part. No, man, play the part, dude. Be the part. Yeah, that's, again, that's that's why it's easy for us to always go back to Jason. He just – that's the way he was, man. He was His game was always first. What he was – that was it. Nothing else seemed to matter. It was it was always fun to watch that guy play. So, uh, Lab, I'll let you – I'm going to let you yeah, get out of here, man. Yeah, I need to. But right, uh, Otherwise, I'll talk your ear off. No, so. that's fine. Next, we we got something special planned coming up, Labby and I, uh, for the for the podcast, for the YouTube channel. So, stick around, stay tuned for that. Well, it'll it'll be another week or so, but uh, be careful wherever you're heading, brother, and uh, hit me up uh, later today or this week. And uh, again, I always appreciate having you come on, and I'm glad you took the call. And love talking to you, brother. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, I appreciate you guys. And, uh, well, now you solo, but uh, you and Chad, you guys do a great job, man. So uh, it's great for the valley to have have some people like you and, and talk about the the players and sports and stuff that's going on. So thanks again, Tom. No, you got it, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. Sounds daddy. Thanks, yeah. brother. That's my guy, man. Labby. It's always fun to talk to. Uh, I mean, I I love his takes 99% of the time, and the 1% I couldn't remember what it was or why I didn't like it. So, again, I know some people may not love to hear that stuff, but I would definitely take it and run with it and – 
yet again, a lot of a lot of people aren't going to tell you that stuff. So again, I I appreciate him coming on and and give me the time he did. Uh, we'll see how this weekend uh, plays out with the Major League Baseball, and uh, there's more news on the high school scene that we'll be getting into. I know a lot of people were messaging me uh, about talking about uh, a curtain situation at a, a school here in our local area and uh, waiting on some further details uh, to get into that. Um, just to be fair to the program, uh, the players, uh, the people involved, uh, definitely don't need to be first on the spot with the story. I uh, would like to have all the facts, details, and things that are going on uh, before I make any statements on something like that. Uh, so, if you tuned in for that, I apologize, uh, but that, I'll definitely get into it as things come out. Um, but again, uh, until then, yeah, I don't think it's right to, to talk about it or be on uh, an opinion on it either way. So anyways, but having said that, again, thank you guys for the support you give the podcast. Uh, again, for downloading, subscribing, all that. Get the podcast or, or follow us on Instagram at Hit or Die and on Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast. Again, that is another episode of Hit or Die.